as developers, we all know the importance of writing unit tests and integration tests to make sure that bugs don't make it into production. Now, if I'm honest, when I'm writing a unit test, very often I use very simplistic test data just for time or laziness. And this is a mistake because when you use simple test data, there's a higher chance that bugs will make it into production. So one way to stop these types of bugs occurring is to use better fake test data. And instead of creating the data yourself, it's much better to use some software to generate that data for you. And this is where this video is going to help. I'm going to review the leading fake test generators on the marketplace today. The good news is they're all free. You can install them and get up and running really quickly. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to level up your coding game. Now, it's worth pointing out that I have created a related tutorial which have all the tools listed below. Also, if you haven't already, smash on the subscribe button. Now, if you haven't come across my channel before, then my name is John and I release a video every single Sunday that will help you to become a better developer and an all round coding legend. So do that. So assuming you've smashed subscribe, let's have a look at our first tool. We're starting off by looking at the best online fake data generator. Now I reviewed a few tools when coming up with this list. I'm going to start off with the runner up and that is generatedata.com. So you can access this website via a web browser by going to generatedata.com. Now from the home screen, you basically have two options. So first you have a quick start where you can just say, you know, I want to generate a name, a phone, an email, and I want to do it in a JSON format. Generate me that data. Boom. As you can see down below, it's created. Now, if we jump back to the home page, we also have the option to use the generator. So click on this, skip to the generator button, and you can see we have this schema builder. Now within the generator, you can define a schema and this schema will then be used to generate your fake data. So the first thing you need to do is define what type of data you want to generate. And from here, we have an option of about 30 different things. So we've got things like name, email, street addresses, countries, regions, lat longs, uh, fixed number of words, booleans, auto incrementals, GUIDs, colors, URLs, currencies, bank numbers, pin numbers, track ones, Chilean RUT number. I mean, the Chilean RTU number is pretty specific, but sometimes, you know, you just need to bust out that Chilean RUT man. Now, after we've defined our data type, you basically give your property a name. You can even then add in some kind of examples. So for names, we can say that, you know, maybe it's just a male name, a female name, all that kind of good stuff. We've even got the ability to add in some options. Now, the great thing is that when we're generating this, let's add in a new row. Let's call it a phone. Let's call it phone two. You can see straight away in the live preview that the phone has been added and we can see some examples. Now, right down the bottom, we can see that we've got this big generate button. So when we click on generate, we can see that we want to generate, say, 10 rows. We can generate it. Off it goes. And this is then going to download a file for us. We can upload our JSON file, have a look at it. And now you've got all this fake data to use in your application. Finally, it's worth pointing out that aside from JSON, we also have the ability to export to CSV, HTML, LIDF, SQL, XML, and then we can even do things like C Sharp. So you can see that we can generate the data array here for us. So we can just copy and paste it inside of a unit test, which is pretty epic. The next tool that we're going to look at is what I personally consider to be the best of the bunch when it comes to the free online data generation tools, and it's called Mockaroo. And you can access Mockaroo at mockaroo.com. So mock a -roo -r -o -o com. And from all my research, I personally think that Mockaroo is the best online fake data generator. Now, the reason for this is the sheer number of different data types that you can use to generate fake data. And I'll show you what I mean now. So when you first land on Mockaroo, you're going to be presented with a screen that looks like this. And your first task will be to find a schema. So this schema is going to find a row and it's going to find what type of data Mockaroo will generate for you. 
Now, as you can see, I can start deleting fields. I can create a new field. So let's say that I'm going to add in a new field. I'm going to call it uh, email address. Now, from the type, if I click on here, you can see that I've got 170 different types of data to generate from. So we've got things like address line two, airport codes. We've got app names. We've got car makes and models. We've got commerce, credit cards, IBMs, money, stock symbols. We've got crypto, Bitcoin addresses. We've got things like health, so drug company names. We've got IT related stuff. So IP addresses, Mac addresses. We've got locations, phone numbers. We've got states. We've got personal stuff, so we've got fake company generator. We've got first names. We've got job titles, slogans, titles, suffixes. This goes on and on. We even got movie genres, movie titles, and such. So at the top, if I just do a search for email, you can see that we've got email address, and off I go. Now, after I've defined my schema, you can see that I can then generate some data. So clicking on the big generate data button, you can see that we need to specify it more than once. So we need to do the delete this. Now, the other thing I should point out is that in this format field here, you can see that we can do CSV, JSON. We can even do SQL, Cassandra, SQL, Firebase, Custom, XML. So pretty much any format you need it in. We can also define the number of rows that we want to create. So let's say that we're going to create a CSV file. Let's generate our data. Off it's going to go. You can see now that we've got our mock data CSV. Now, if I open this up, when LibreOffice eventually opens, and as you can see in the CSV file, Mockaroo has generated some pretty good data. So in this example, you can see that all the names are pretty different. We can see the email addresses, they all come with really unique end names so we've got things like admin.ch we've got tumblr.com we've got some spotify addresses virgin media we've got some wonderground microsoft so this really is great fake data which will allow you to properly test your application The previous two tools are really handy whenever you're creating unit tests or maybe integration tests and you just need some quick fake data to work with. However, let's say you're doing normal development work. In these instances, sometimes you just need an endpoint that you can call that will get you some data so you can start writing some code and building some things. And this is where fake store API comes into play. So in order to get started with fake store API, go over to their website, which is fakestoreapi.com. Classic. Now, when you scroll down, you can see we've got some example code. So we can do a fetch to fakestoreapi.com, and then we're gonna get some results, and then we can just render it out in our code. So you can see here, if we try it, we're gonna make this call, and we're gonna get this JSON back. Now, when it comes to fake store API, it's all basically centered around e-commerce. So we've got products, carts, users and login tokens so if i click on all of these three you can see that we've got some example of a product so we've got title price description images a rating for our carts we've got you know products user id dates the user service is going to return fields like an id an email username and password a name an address including geolocation and finally the login service is going to return a token that you can use to pretend that you're logging people in. Now, another thing that's worth pointing out about Fake Store API is that it's RESTful. This means it's supporting all the different types of HTTP methods that you'd expect. So we've got gets, post, puts, patches, and deletes, and all the documentation can be found from the website. So all in all, if you're just looking for a simple few endpoints to work with in order for you to start building out an e-commerce store, this is well worth looking at. So far, all the tools that I've looked at have been very data focused. However, what happens if you're a web developer building some templates and you need some fake images to work with to quickly mock things up? And this is where Pixum Photos comes into play. Getting started with pics and photos is super simple. Now, you don't even really need to go to the website on this one, but it is pics and photos if you want to go there. Now, all you need to do is basically use a URL. 
So you can see here, we've got this HTTPS pixum.photo slash, and then you put in your size dimensions. So let's copy this, put this into a browser, and you can see that we've got an image. Now let's see if we want to make a square. Let's say we want to do 500 by 500. We do it like that. Or we can do something giant. So we can do something like 900 by say 33. And then off we go. We're going to have some weird image. Now, in my opinion, the nice thing about Pixum Photos is that it returns a real world image. And this can make it much easier to visualize things when you're designing. However, sometimes maybe when you're doing a layout, maybe you're doing a wireframe, you just want to work with a simpler image to make things less distracting. And when that happens, you want to head over to dummyimages.com. So this works exactly the same principle where we go to HTTPS dummyimage.com and then we just press in our resolution and we can also press in our foreground and background color. So let's just copy this put it into a browser and you can see that we've got a nice black image which we can then just modify however we need to boom now the previous tools are all generic tools that should work for any programming language however what happens if you're a javascript developer and you want to create unit tests or dummy data in your code and this is where you can use a brand new package which is called faker so you can install faker within your project by doing an npm install and then at faker-js slash faker now the great thing about faker is the documentation is pretty good so if you head over to fakerjs.dev you can scroll down and you can see you have loads of options to generate data so we've got things like products finance locations so if we look at the api reference you can see there's a bunch of stuff here so we've got finance law um, utils location and honestly, if you want to generate fake data in a JavaScript code level, this is the package you want to use. Now, importing and using the package is pretty simple. You can see that you'll import faker and you can do things like faker.hacker abbreviation. Or let's pick another example. Let's do sex. <laughs> so if we do that, we can just do faker.person.sex. So if you're doing a JavaScript project and you need some code based solution, use faker. Now, you know that your boy is also a .NET fanboy. So before we leave, we also need to talk about the .NET equivalent, which is called Bogus. So if you are a C Sharp developer and you want to work with dummy data at a code level, then Bogus is the package for you. So you can install Bogus via NuGet by doing an install dash package Bogus. And basically Bogus is a port of Faker just in C Sharp and .NET. So this means that the Bogus API supports all the same features as Faker. So the documentation is really comprehensive for this. We can see that we've got things like addresses, commerce, company, dates, finance, hackers. We've got intranets, law rooms, names, phone numbers, rants, reviews, all that kind of good stuff that we had for Faker. Now, sadly, because of time, I can't do a complete deep dive into the Bogus API. If anyone is interested, leave a comment and I might do a video all about Bogus. In essence, there's loads of different ways to use Bogus. You can see that we can use inheritance. We've got a fluent API. We can use it directly. But in essence, what we want to do is import Faker. We can pass in a locale. And then from here, you can see that we can do faker.random number. We've got faker law and sentence, faker's random number. We could do a faker person sex. <laughs> but you get the point. So, as you can see, Bogus definitely copies Faker because the API you need to use is even called Faker in Bogus. However, if you're doing C Sharp and you need some random data, then install this NuGet package because you won't be disappointed. So, that concludes my list of the best fake dummy data generators that are free on the marketplace today. So, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you agree with my list? Do you think I've missed any tools out? Just let me know because I'm always looking for some new ones. Now, remember, if you haven't subscribed, click subscribe right now. And also, if you have found value from my video, click on the like button because it really does help me keep motivated creating videos. And that is easier said than done sometimes.
Now, if you are interested in again leveling up your developer skills, I've created a video called the best chat GPT extension for Visual Studio Code. It's linked to you on the screen below. So click on that if you want to learn more. Otherwise, have an amazing day and happy coding.